I'm, I'm Nene Jones. Um, my name originally is Amelia Jones, but everybody calls me Nene, and I am I. And I'm very new here to your church, and I um, was so taken by the fact that you opened your, your church and, and everything in it to me when my husband passed away. So I, I really wanted to be a part of this church. And um, since I am new, um, Kathy asked if maybe I would like to volunteer, for, which I did, and we worked really hard that day. Um, fixing the meal and taking it down and, and serving. And when I came home, I was super tired, but it was such such a good super tiredness. Um, I felt so warm um, inside. Um, the Lutheran church there is beautiful. And I'm sure years ago, it was filled with a big congregation uh, and now, of course, neighborhoods change, and their situation has changed, and we need to see if we can help these people. Um, food insecurity is a big deal in uh, all of our communities. We don't always mm -hmm. think of it that way, but... Um, and, and certainly your community is different than ours. So what are the food insecurity needs of, of your community, you know, there in the congregation, but also in the uh, surrounding area? I think there's two things that are real important is one is we're in the middle of a food desert um, at First English. We have no grocery store anywhere. I mean, you have to go down to the, you know, probably it's about probably two miles down the street um, to go to Kroger and Bexley. Maybe it's a mile and a half. Um, that's the closest grocery store around. Um, and to most people aren't gonna carry groceries, walk down to you know, even a mile and a half, get groceries, carry them all back to the house. So the, um, they either have two options, ride the bus, which was adds an extra cost, or they go to the family dollar, which you know, it's more expensive, they don't have high quality foods. Um, that's, you know, a huge issue. The other is just poverty in general. Food prices have gone through the roof. I mean, when you're paying, you know, the prices for meat and everything, you look at what you can feed your family. You get, you know, it's funny. Some people get $11 in food stamps. Some people maybe get like 150, but even $150 trying to feed a family in four for a month is not going to go very far. So the meals we provide just kind of supplement um, what they would normally buy. And it's a free, it's a meal with a protein, you know, something that they don't have to actually purchase because a lot of people just, they eat processed food. They eat foods that aren't really healthy for them because they can't afford the good for you foods. Resurrection helps out with that on uh, with those Sunday morning meals, uh, one Sunday a month, and with the Thursday evening meals um, every other month. Mm -hmm. um, how are those efforts on Sunday and Thursday impacting your community? Resurrection does such a great job. I mean, all the partners do a good job, but Resurrection does such a good job being really aware of the, what the food needs are. Um, you know, talking about what kind of foods people like, you guys take that in consideration, making sure there's plenty of food, people take that in consideration. And it's, again, it's, it, if our congregation alone between, we don't have the people power and we don't also have the money. So we can't provide these meals, every, you know, twice, you know, twice a week, every week, all on our own. So resurrection comes in and they're just, you guys are such a blessing because you just help provide that meal and you're, uh, you know, more people there to join with us and you're passing out. I mean, I think last time you guys were there, we did like 130 breakfasts. I mean, that's a lot of people that you touch in just one Sunday morning. And then you multiply that over the weeks that you guys do it. And you're touching a lot of lives, a whole lot of lives. So what is it that connects you or calls you or draws you to this First English uh, food ministry? 
Well, I think for me, it was, um, it was a way to serve and to also have that other um, mark of discipleship, uh, that being giving. And I always wanted whatever ministry that I was involved with, I wanted it to be to the glory of God. And for me, First English kind of checked those boxes in that um, I could give of my time and also give of my talent in the fact that I like to cook and I like to serve and I like to nourish people and I like to make sure they're well fed. So by doing that with First English, I, I just felt like I was fulfilling that ministry to the people that we were serving there. It's uh, helping the others. There's so much need in the world today and there's so much need around us by reaching out and having that outreach to those people who really need the, the extra nourishment and the compassion and the love and the fellowship that it goes into uh, preparing and serving for them. Uh, and going down to First English when we were cooking down there, the breakfast, uh, you could just see the thankful. You hear they, they are just so thankful. Uh, they always told you how thankful they are and very polite. And so that that makes the ministry really worthwhile for me, uh, getting satisfaction out of helping somebody who needs it. Also, I just always felt it was so important that people have their basic needs taken care of, um, food, shelter, and, you know, love and care. And I just felt this ministry, and I think Jesus was a good, you know, he really showed us how important it was to take care of the people around you and make sure they had their needs taken care of. And um, so this ministry really for me was um, a way to fulfill that, that desire of mine to, to give to others and to make sure that people had a good meal um, and were nourished. Um, and I really think it shows, um, you know, my, my, my love for God and, and Jesus and that, um, um, and I really did enjoy going down because I really did feel like um, the fellowship we had with the people at First English was so wonderful. Um, and when we were serving and um, having conversation and I just hope, hope they felt you know, God's love when we were there. Um, it's, it's a little disappointing now that we, you know, it's not quite the same, but, <laughs> and sometimes I'll, I'll just be honest, it's a little bit of a chore to do the cooking part and not see the other, you know, be a part of the other part. But, um, but I know that they're getting a meal and, um, and I think that's, you know, important. Here's my bonus question the one you weren't expecting. What would you say to encourage someone to participate? Uh, someone who has maybe been thinking about it or maybe thinking, uh, that's not me, that's not, uh, that's not for me. What, what would you say to encourage them to consider, you know, going off at least just, just one time, just one time for breakfast or one Thursday evening for a, for a meal? I would invite them to come down to the church <laughs> and see these people in person and uh, see how how needy they are and how thankful they are. Um, I, I don't I don't see how anybody could turn their back on that. <laughs> yes, I, I really agree with Connie. It's um, you know, there's people with all different. You, you just don't know what people's circumstances are and what life is like for anybody. I mean, and um, I just think once you're there and you see that there are people just like everybody else and they have need and um, they're thankful for it. They're thankful for the, I think the, the service that we provide and, um, but also, you know, joking, having fun talking and um, teasing each other and I don't know it's just it it's just it's just a nice time because they're people just like the rest of us 
You guys always do, already do a lot and we are so grateful for that. But I think the one thing that um, we can do is just join together. And um, we got a hunger grant from the ELCA to just around the idea that we can't solve hunger until we as human beings get to know one another and, and spend time together and love each other. And so that's our goal. Um, that's become a goal last year and, you know, but I would just invite people to come down to First English, um, worship with us, come to the block parties when we are able to have block parties again, come down to the meals, volunteer, um, just be involved any way that you can. We're all part of the body of Christ and we're all trying to do God's work in this world. So let's partner together. Hopefully we can come up to resurrection sometime, you know, a group of us can, but just um, let's partner together and be involved together and work together, not so much one congregation and another congregation, but together as the body of Christ. You know, um, I'm old and I know people um, uh, might have aches and pains and um, think maybe, you know, I can't do this. Um, but once you get yourself out of your comfort zone and into their zone, I think you will, you will just feel so much blessed. Uh, when, when Kathy, um, uh, and I don't know if she even invited me because I, I think I came to her and I said, I want to, I want to be a part of it because it just has, it's such a need and I just needed to be a part of it. And uh, she said, of course, and we went to that kitchen and started cooking and it was fabulous. And like I say, I was tired, but it was such a good feeling, such a good feeling. Okay. And you brought something to share. I, I did. I just, um, uh, just, it's just a very short little article. It says, um, to keep our eyes open to see where we find God. God is with us in Jesus. He is not only with us in lonely hours. Jesus Christ also encounters us in every step we take, in every person we meet. God now speaks to us from every human being, the other person. This person is God's claim on us. God's claim is made on us in the wanderer who's on the street, the baker at the door, the sick person, the person near us, in every person with whom we are together. This energizes our human relationship because in the other, we receive God's appeal to us. In the other, we see the face of Jesus. Jesus encounters us, one of the least of these, in all persons. Amen.